evil takes a human form in Regina George. Mean Girls icon Regina George is the undisputed ruler of North Shore High. The queen of the plastics has all the trappings of a monarch. Her name, Regina, is Latin for queen, and she wears the spring fling crown. They're teen royalty. But in fact, the tyrant Regina is not a queen by rights. As her arch nemesis Janice Ian tells us when we're first introduced to her, Regina George is an evil dictator. If we break down Regina's techniques of controlling her fellow students, we get insight into the anatomy of a dictator. She's power hungry, manipulative, glamorous, angry, and totally compelling. That's really interesting. And in fact, it makes sense that Mean Girls chooses to offer up this portrait of a despot in a high school setting. After all, for most of us, adolescent social scenarios are defined by terror and tyranny. Mom, can, can you pick me up? I'm scared. So if we look closer at Mean Girls on the 15-year anniversary of Tina Fey's iconic comedy, we can discover a fascinating analysis of how dictatorships rule, why people help them maintain their power, and how we can overthrow the Reginas in our lives, in high school and beyond. Okay, let's rock this bitch. Before we go on, we want to tell you a little bit about this video's sponsor. Mubi is a curated film streaming service with a twist. You get 30 films per month, a new film every day. It's a hand-picked selection of movie gems from around the world. So click the link in our description below to get a full month of Mubi for free. Dictatorships thrive on the cult of the leader. And when Katie Heron enters junior year at North Shore High, Regina George is a near mythical figure in the school. I hear her hair is insured for $10,000. I hear she does car commercials in Japan. In addition to being hated and feared, she's revered, loved, and admired. So she encapsulates the complex combination of feelings a dictator inspires in her subjects. The weird thing about hanging out with Regina was that I could hate her, and at the same time, I still wanted her to like me. When she's hit by the bus, we're told, The more people are scared of you, the more flowers you get. Regina isn't a goddess, though. Her myth and her rule are entirely calculated, and we start to see the strings when Janice, a political dissident who was once in favor but has been oppressed by the current regime, We were best friends in middle school. I know, right? It's so embarrassing. Decides to stage a campaign of nonviolent civil resistance. How do you overthrow a dictator? You cut off her resources. Janice gives us a logical dissection of this ruler's key resources. Her high status man candy. Technically good physique. An ignorant band of loyal followers. In fact, academics Johannes Gershewski and Wolfgang Merkel also frame dictatorships as resting on three key pillars, which are legitimacy, co-optation or co-option, and repression. If any one of these is compromised, the regime becomes unstable and theoretically can be overthrown. So let's look closer at how each of these three pillars operates in Regina's reign of terror. Since a dictator does not inherit power through a monarchy or existing laws, after taking control they need to establish the legitimacy of their rule. Regina's legitimacy is accomplished through the first two items on Janice's list, her man candy Aaron Samuels and her hot body. The ideal partner is an extension of the dictator's carefully curated cult of personality. I hear Regina George is dating Aaron Samuels again. Dictators regularly choose attractive, outwardly gentle consorts to soften their public image and appeal to the masses. As a handsome, well-liked athletic senior guy, Aaron Samuels functions like a badge of validity. If this perfect guy chooses her, that reinforces that she is the most perfect girl in school. Regina doesn't actually appear to be in love with Aaron Samuels. Ah, uh, lip gloss. Privately, she's more attracted to Shane Oman, but Regina has evidently decided that Shane is a less ideal public partner to support her regime. And so she makes a cold, tactical choice to perform romance with Aaron while keeping her authentic whims private. Regina's technically good physique is also a part of her legitimacy. It's an accepted rule in this culture that the leader must be conventionally attractive. As she puts it, the Spring Fling Queen is always pretty. One of the first things that strikes Katie about Regina is her glamour. I'd never seen anybody so glamorous. 
the student body finds Regina's physical perfection aspirational. Regina George is flawless. The other girls want to be her. Being with the plastics was like being famous. People looked at you all the time and everybody just knew stuff about you. In many authoritarian regimes, the appealing nature of the life of the dictator is part of what helps to keep them in power. If North Shore was Us Weekly, they would always be on the cover. Because she's so successful at asserting legitimacy as a ruler, like many dictators, Regina enjoys formal and ritualistic displays of affection by her public. She's the uncontested winner of popular votes. She always wins Spring Fling Queen. Who cares? I care! And she creates continuity through traditions that her populace privately doesn't really like. They do it every year. But still feels obligated to exuberantly cheer. The second pillar, co-option, is the act of dampening potential opposition by inviting prospective challengers to join forces with the dictatorship. Okay, you should just know that we don't do this a lot, so this is like a really huge deal. We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. And this is exactly what Regina does with Katie. On first viewing, we might wonder why Regina befriends Katie. She doesn't even like you that much. But look at the context of this first meeting. Regina notices Katie being hit on by Jason. Is your muffin buttered? <laughs> what? Gretchen Wiener's crush, whose lack of loyalty repeatedly embarrasses Regina's number two, and by extension, Regina herself. You were supposed to call me last night. Jason, you do not come to a party at my house with Gretchen and then scam on some poor innocent girl right in front of us three days later. Regina makes the snap judgment that Katie's good looks and interesting backstory are a threat. But you're like really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty. So she subsumes this new girl into the plastics to negate the threat and keep her under close control. Damn, you are so lucky you have us to guide you. By absorbing potential opponents into the fabric of their state, dictators get insight into their preferences and weaknesses. So. Have you seen any guys that you think you're cute yet? When Regina finds out that Katie is interested in her ex-boyfriend Aaron, she realizes that this potential coupling with Katie's looks and Aaron's cultural cachet could usurp her spotlight. So she acts quickly to protect her cult of personality and stop this symbol of her legitimacy from being stolen. Gretchen Wieners and Karen Smith, too, are part of the plastics because of co-option. Karen is another pretty face who could be a problem if not brought into the fold. Regina even says herself, I mean, the crazy thing is, is that it should be Karen, but..." People forget about her because she's such a slut. Since the Spring Fling Queen is expected to be pretty, Karen has a more legitimate claim to the crown due to being even prettier than Regina. Boo, you whore. Meanwhile, Gretchen is a rich heiress. She's totally rich because her dad invented toaster strudel. This reflects how dictators often give the wealthy prestigious positions to bring gravitas and resources to their regime, while minimizing any danger of competition. The magic of co-option is that people feel invested in the despotic state the more they participate in it. No, I bet she sells drugs on the side to pay for a pathetic divorce. You let it out, honey. Put it in the book. So Regina even makes the regular citizens complicit in her rule by drawing on her immense charisma and ability to make people like her. Oh my god, I love your skirt. Where did you get it? The recipients feel special to be singled out by these brief moments of attention from the great leader. Even if people don't like her, they still want to be involved with her. One time, she punched me in the face. It was awesome. As the only thing worse than being in the burn book is not being in the burn book. You're not in it. Those bitches. Co-option has its risks, however. Once welcomed into the hierarchy of rulership, new members might use that status to overthrow the dictator. Was I the new queen bee? And the third pillar is repression, the part we all remember about dictators. The despot keeps her subjects in line through means of fear, violence, and punishment. Regina tasks her enforcers with doing her dirty work. No, no, oh no, you can't like Aaron Samuels. That's Regina's ex-boyfriend. Like digging for information and resolving conflicts. Regina's number two, Gretchen, knows everything about everyone in their society. That's why her hair is so big, it's full of secrets. And this might make us think of a dictator's secret police. The myth of Regina as above it all captures the idea that the popular kids in school don't even know the names of the little people. But far from being royally removed from her subjects, the dictator Regina has a file on each of them. It'll be like our little secret. Hello? I know your secret. Regina is watching all of the time, assessing every movement amongst the ranks. And when a civilian acts out, her punishment is swift. Regina's rules are petty and dramatically restrictive. Only wear your hair in a ponytail once a week. 
so I guess you pick today. Passed down to others, generally not directly, but by her underlings. <gasps> On Wednesdays, we wear pink. These rules are respected and recognized by everyone. I think I'm joining the mathletes. No. No, no. no. You cannot do that. That is social suicide. Even those far down the social ladder. You can't join mathletes. It's social suicide. Refusing to bend the rules is a vital part of Regina's strict regime. The meaner Regina was to her, the more Gretchen tried to win Regina back. But also her downfall, as Regina herself is the only one who remembers that these rules are artificial. Whatever. Those rules aren't real. You can't sit with us! Janice's plan destabilizes Regina's rule, but it doesn't finish her off. We witness a violent power grab as Katie, however unconsciously, makes a play for Regina's place. This challenge leads to a crisis of leadership. That Katie girl is hot. She might even be hotter than Regina George. When Regina sees Katie coming for her spot and discovers Katie's sabotage, Mother! She resorts to repression to punish the would-be usurper, framing Katie, Gretchen, and Karen as the sole authors of the burn book. She then starts a riot to punish her challenger. But the chaos brings the people together, and Regina's repressive practices are brought out into the light. How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? Even more damaging is Janice's public reveal of the plot against Regina. We gave her these candy bar things that would make her gain weight, <laughs> and we turned her best friends against her. As Janice is carried on the shoulders of her contemporaries like a revolutionary hero, this truth bomb has punctured Regina's leader myth. Up to this point, Regina has been a distant enigma, but when the girls hear proof that she's a fallible human being like them, they no longer idolize her as an untouchable god-slash-monster. The movie compares Regina to Caesar. My man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, might translate into, why is he so huge and obnoxious? Why should Caesar get to stomp around like a giant while the rest of us try not to get smushed under his big feet? Just like Caesar, Regina ends up being the last dictator before a new form of leadership will emerge. And also like Caesar, she is so powerful she needs to finally be taken down by brute force. Regina isn't actually killed, but the moment is symbolic. It represents that while Regina the person survives, Regina the dictator's rule is over. Notably, a school bus also almost hits Katie on her first day, but Katie, careful and nervous, jumps back. I'll be careful. Here, Regina is so sure of her strength and power that she doesn't even bother looking before crossing the road. The movie ends with the junior plastics, new freshman wannabe Reginas, almost getting hit by a bus too. So this ending foreshadows that one day, when they get so big-headed they stop being careful, their regime will meet the same fate as Regina's finally did. The student body votes Katie in as Spring Fling Queen, signaling that she is now perceived as the most fearsome figure in the class. I voted for Katie Heron because she pushed her. <laughs> but Katie rejects this opening to replace Regina. <laughs> Upon winning, she hands out pieces of the crown to her classmates. This symbolic gesture redistributes power among the people. As Regina takes a small piece for herself, she is reintegrated into the student body. Her meek thank you and regal wave signify that she accepts her diminished role as a figurehead, more or less just another student. So what does this elaborate tale of dictatorship have to do with girl world and the culture of American high school? Sarah Davies writes that Stalin himself believed in the idea that, quote, great individuals are only important to the extent that they reflect wider social forces. And the unattainably beautiful, wealthy, coquettishly feminine Regina reflects the social ideals teenage girls in her culture are expected to live up to. Regina's like the Barbie doll I never had. The name of Regina's group, The Plastics, neatly encompasses the world of lavish consumerism these girls live in. Get in, loser! We're going shopping! These teenagers' mating rituals take place at the mall, where they pay on plastic. Their Jingle Bell Rock outfits are slick and shiny, like plastic. Regina is lauded because she has two Fendi purses and a silver Lexus. The epitome of conspicuous consumption, and both she and her mother have had plastic surgery. <laughs> Once Katie fully becomes part of this world, Janice tells her, Buddy, you're not pretending anymore. You're plastic. Cold, shiny, hard plastic. So to be revered as an elite in this culture, you must disdain the natural, the organic, the real, and be cold, shiny, and hard. But though she seems to have everything, it's striking that Regina George is full of anger. 
Once Gretchen thought Regina was mad at her, the secret started pouring out. Katie cracks Gretchen by making her think Regina is mad at her, which works because Regina just always seems to be mad. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. When she was preparing for the role, Rachel McAdams built the palpable anger of Regina George by listening to Courtney Love's music. Oh, make me over. And watching Alec Baldwin's famous speech from Glengarry Glen Ross. You, that's my name. <laughs> You know why, mister? Because you drove a Hyundai to get here tonight. I drove an $80,000 BMW. That's my name. So what exactly is Regina so furious about? For one thing, her plastic life doesn't actually seem very fun. She feels she has to constantly be on a diet to maintain her physique. I really want to lose three pounds. She doesn't have any equals who can be honest with her. Oh my god, what are you talking about? You're so skinny. Ugh. Shut up. And this sharply intelligent, strong person doesn't have much to do besides shop, work on her appearance, and manipulate people. So essentially, she's bored. As we enter this teen girl world through the naive eyes of outsider Katie, we get a sense of all the things that might be confusing and frustrating for American teens. Like antagonistic behavior from adults. I had never lived in a world where adults didn't trust me, where they were always yelling at me. Parents who don't know how to impose healthy boundaries. I'm a cool mom. <laughs> right, Regina? Please stop talking. Okay. Problems at home. I mean, her parents totally don't sleep in the same bed anymore, that's what you mean. And mixed messages about sexuality. Don't have sex, because you will get pregnant and die. Which is a prized aspect of popularity. Halloween is the one night a year when a girl can dress like a total slut and no other girls can say anything about it. But also a source of shame. Regina says everyone hates you because you're such a slut. And a feature of their lives from a shockingly young age. Oh, you'll get socialized, all right, a little slice like you. Most saliently, Katie observes that in girl world, you're not allowed to express conflict. So this culture of elaborate oppression is really caused by these young women's frustration at not knowing how to express your anger in a healthy way. In the end, Regina learns to harness her anger into athletics. Your physical therapist taught her to channel all her rage into sports. So the lesson isn't that teenage girls shouldn't feel angry, it's that anger can be redirected powerfully and for good if we learn how to find appropriate outlets for our feelings. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. In other words, we don't have to accept being underlings. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, or what to feel. We the people put rulers in power and we can take that power away. Whether that applies to real political regimes or the mean girls who are making us feel like we're not good enough. All the same, when we think of mean girls, it's not subdued final scene Regina we remember, but mean Regina, who exists as a cult icon celebrated by pop stars, presidents, and everyone in between. Why are you so obsessed with me? There's still something deeply compelling about Regina's power, her mystery, her manipulation, her rage. She reminds us that autocrats can look a lot more seductive and charismatic than we might think. And so, like a true dictator, her legacy lives on. Love ya. Hey guys, this is Grace. And today I wanna to talk to you about one of our favorite places to watch movies, Mubi. Mubi is a treasure trove of films from around the globe. Every day a new film is added and the oldest is taken away. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch, Mubi is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies, making it so much easier for you. They feature hard to come by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser known films by your favorite famous directors and more. Plus, you can even download the films to watch offline. And there are no ads ever. One movie you can watch right now on Mubi is Listen Up, Philip. It's directed by Alex Ross Perry, whose new film, Her Smell, has been getting tons of buzz. Listen Up, Philip is a thought-provoking, dark comedy with a star-studded cast that includes Jason Schwartzman and Elizabeth Moss. We can't recommend Mubi highly enough. You can try it out now for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below. 